Hello, this is Targor. This is video is a Twitch stream that was not edited, so it's gonna look like a Twitch stream. Welcome to my vision of World of Warcraft Classic Plus. The design direction of my vision of Classic Plus is substantially different from that of retail WoW Circuit Shadowlands and the private servers Vanilla Plus and Turtle WoW. This is partially because it seems to fix Vanilla WoW's many problems first, flesh out and polish what's already there second, and add new content third. This is part of my playlist of videos. Check out the video description for a link to the play out. playlist. What's already there? Save video description of the TXT. The document displayed is my vision of Classic Plus, and the document's version number is 1.5.15. All versions of the document are based upon patch 1.12.2 of World of Warcraft, the one right before the Burning Crusade pre patch. If you just want to know about the general design direction of my vision of Classic Plus, before you are always look into this, then watch the introductory video in this playlist, or if you do document it yourself, and look at the list of major features. The link to the document is in my channel's about page. That, and I do not have a team of people or however work with me to make an actual private server add this. This is all pure design as so and I ain't done yet. Note that most of the game's items and pending re do I have laid out the groundwork for it. In my vision of WoW Classic Plus, nearly all base weapon speeds are going to be useful for competitive end-game, PvP, and PvE gameplay. Part of how this is accomplished is that right patterns and damage enhanced shamans were tentatively changed to perform as well with fast two handed weapons as with slow ones. I also changed survival hunters to desire a two handed weapon of middling speed, not so tentatively. In fact, not all tentatively, it's kind of fun a lot. Well, I suppose it's not quite finalized, but I don't see any reason to change that one. I also changed Tilted Zero to desire a main handed weapon of middling speed. And I also changed Markmanship Hunters to not care so much about the ranged weapon speed, uh, for the time being. And I also changed Beast Mastery Hunters to desire a fast range weapon. There are also no number of enchants in this team that, it, that either increase your attack speed or slow your attack speed while compensating for it in the form of a large buff. Examples being Arcanite Counterweights, formerly Iron Counterweights, and the Brutality Enchants, which are new, respectively. The Brutality Enchants in particular give you a 10% attack speed penalty while giving you... A high amount of crit chance based on whether it's a one hand enchant or a two hand enchant. That, however, I wrote this, sub this subsection on weapon speed changes a long time ago, so I'm presumably going to get rid of none of these changes when I get around to it. Now, then, on to what's actually written here. Of course, changes to base weapon damage will be paired with the below changes to base weapon speed. The speed, which I assume is the given, but, well, I had to assume it was given, but I recently read this part there. Where's my cursor? This part, yeah, I recently wrote that part. Anyway, the speed of Soul Thrace the Lasher, I almost said Soul Frost, will be increased to 3.2, making it be useful to both Revival Hunters and Red Paladins, and making it be a bit useful to Warriors. It used to be 2.6 again, if I recall correctly. As mentioned in second number 3.0.8, Crocus was on these changes to the last video, excuse me, the second last video, Ravager was set, changed to have 3.7 speed. Rubeblade of Baron Rivnair will have its speed increased to 3.3. It is intended to be useful for survival hunters and red paladins. The speed of Black Blade of Sharam, however, will be lowered to 3.9 to differentiate from Rune Blade of Baron Rivendare. Further differentiate it. All quest rewards from the quest Whirlwind Weapon will have 3.7 speed. The rewards are already differentiated by their weapon types. The purifier will be that way, not everybody's just going to get the axe or very human to hammer. The purifier will be turned into a fruit. Uh, the hammer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the hammer is slower than a sword. Anyway, yeah, in vanilla. But in this game, it's all going to be 3.7 speed for the world of quest rewards. Anyway, the purifier will be turned into a 3.1 speed weapon. The uh, epic gun from the Argentine, Insig formerly Insignia, now Exalted. Typhoon, the sword from Azagos, will be turned into a 3.2 speed weapon for survival hunters and red paladins. The speed of Holy War Sword, the BOE Green, will be decreased to 2.8. Demon's Claw, 2.8 speed. Divide War Blade, 3.7 speed. Death Striker, 3.2 speed. Brew Hammer, 3.8 speed. Dragons, those are all BOE Green world drops with random suffixes on them, including Holy War Sword. Dragon's Call, the epic sword from Shade of Moranicus and the Sunken Temple, will have its speed decreased to 2.7. Nightfall and Spinal Reaper offer speeds decrease to 4.0. However, they all have, uh, they're still going to be, uh, they're going to still be special weapons. Elemental Tomb Blade will be turned into a dagger and of the same model as before. 
and it will be turned into a 1.6 speed weapon, giving some casters an, an extra option for a one-hand pre-raid pre weapon for an, giving some casters an extra option for a one-handed pre-raid epic caster weapon. How is that a tongue twister for me? Anyway, it's all the weapon speed changes that I got for the time being, and uh, thanks for watching, I guess.